Hi everybody. Um, I'm not sure how many people are going to see this video, but it has been my goal to start a YouTube channel relating to my Christian walk and related experiences for a really, really long time. Um, there are many different parts to my testimony, which I'll probably share over time on this channel. But I had actually started to put out a few videos um, from dreams I had had, things of that nature, which has happened to me pretty much my whole life. I had just started to create a YouTube channel and just put out a few videos, a handful of videos. And then I actually went through a battle with leukemia last year. Um, for which I'm still in a little bit of treatment, but thankfully all is well, praise God. But essentially I'm starting over with this channel and I'm just putting this out as my first video. And the first um, part of my testimony, I guess you could call it, that I want to share is actually directly related to the whole experience of my being dos uh, diagnosed with leukemia. So I don't know, I'm 28. I don't know any of you from my generation. You might remember movies like My Sister's Keeper or The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants or there is a few other movies, but there was a really large emphasis on leukemia, I feel, in movies, um, kind of in like the early 2000s, that time period. And what I was diagnosed with specifically was acute lymphoblastic leukemia, which is an aggressive childhood leukemia and kind of childhood young adult leukemia that attacks the white blood cells, um, the lymphocytes specifically. And this had actually been a dream that I had had about this. And I had released it on my YouTube channel before I received this diagnosis and knew that I was ill. But I deleted the video. I'm just starting from scratch, uh, given like in light of everything that has happened. But in that first video, when I was describing this dream I'd had, which I'll get to in a second, I actually um, was like, maybe this is about this or that. Like, I had no clue. I was so wrong. I, I mean, not completely. But I thought that this dream I'd had was just kind of a warning about things that are unseen or things that are undetected. But it was a literal dream about acute lymphoblastic leukemia, which is also called acute lymphocytic leukemia. So a really, really quick, because I didn't know any of this, um, a really quick kind of overview of how it works is that your blood is actually produced in your bones. It's produced in the bone marrow, which my oncologist had to explain to me um, at the time. Um, and you have white, red, sorry, white blood cells, red blood cells, and there's different kinds of white blood cells, which are your immune system. Um, but essentially, the lymphocytes are a kind of white blood cell that remain immature because your blood cells go through different phases in, their develop in the development of the cell. Um, they remain immature and they basically become mutated and then they multiply and multiply and they end up taking over the entire bloodstream and then they can crowd out other cells that your body really needs um, to function properly. And so I'd been having all these symptoms for years, like bruising, shortness of breath. In a separate video, I'll go into a deeper kind of like dive into like why I didn't go to the doctor sooner, or what happened with all of that. But it was before the 4th of July. Um, I had to think about it. And I remember now this dream I had was around the 4th of July, a few days before um, in July of 2022. Okay. I'd had a dream where I was basically just standing in a room, the basement of a house, um, and there were these white, sick baby snakes. They were tiny. Like, I knew in the dream that they were very, very small, um, like baby snakes, which, as I just mentioned, blasts, which are cancerous, leukemic white blood cells that are found in acute lymphoblastic leukemia, they are an immature form of the cell. They're baby cells, right, that are sick. And in the dream, I saw 
thousands and thousands and thousands of sick white snakes, okay, like baby snakes. And they were coiled and knotted into these like balls, okay? And there were these cages. Um, and Job, I think Job 40, I think it's Job 40, 18 maybe, it refers to the bones as bars of iron. It's actually speaking about not a human. It's talking about, I think, the Leviathan, but it's still, it mentions, it compares bones to bars of iron um, or something like that, like brass. It refers to bones as metal, okay, which is important because like I said, I'm not a biologist. I knew nothing about how blood is even created. So blood comes from the bones, okay? So I only made this connection later, but there were all these cages that were like iron bars and there were these these snakes that were there were thousands of them and they were in all these different cages and they were spilling out and spilling out and spilling out and I knew from looking at them that they were sick and there was something wrong with them and they were falling into these pools of water that were all over the ground which now I know represented the blood because that's how it works with leukemia it starts in the actual bones in the marrow and then when it gets to be too much it spills out over into the blood so I hope this is all making sense I could not make the connection. I had no idea what this dream meant. I made a video about it. I talked to my pastor about it. Like, it was like I was so far off as to what this meant. But basically, that's the beginning of the stream. But then there was a woman who was just looking a normal. I mean, she was white. She was kind of tall, pretty thin, had like strawberry blonde, kind of reddish, long, straight hair and a ponytail. She was wearing like khakis. She looked like a zookeeper, honestly. And she had a stick like a pole and she was keeping the snakes like putting them back in their cages back in their cages as they were falling out and so I was kind of like watching her but I had this awareness in the back of my mind as well that there was despite all these white snakes everywhere that were very like creepy and they were like disturbing to me I had this awareness that there was this large black like python or something like a snake like a very large black snake that was out there and I'm watching her try to keep these white snakes under control um but I know okay like I have to go and find this giant black snake so as I mentioned again just to kind of show you how God worked in my life with this particular warning um I went through a custody battle for my daughter, I have a three-year-old daughter. And part of the reason, well, like the relationship ended because I kind of set a boundary because I said like, okay, we are not legally married. I'll leave this for a whole separate video. But essentially I felt like I was living in sin with this man and I was like, and he wouldn't put me on his health insurance for which we'd have, we would have needed to be legally married like on all, like it would have had to be super official for me to go on his health insurance. And I was having bruising after our daughter was born. So that's kind of part of how we broke up. But again, it all goes back to leukemia right at the end of the day and my walk with God and just getting more into the word and actually like following the word and not just saying I'm a Christian, but really like trying to obey God's word um, and becoming more aware of sin and all of that. But um, basically I did not go to the doctor for a very long time with these symptoms because I was so focused on this custody battle for my daughter that I was like, I'll deal with it later. I'll deal with it later. Once I became a single mom, I didn't have money really to go to the doctor. I didn't have money for insurance. At the time I was 26. So I was aging off of my parents' insurance and I was supposed to go on to this man's insurance and then he wouldn't put me on. So I basically got a job working at a daycare so I could keep my daughter with me but still be earning some kind of money because she was only eight months old when we broke up but long story short I had all these symptoms I'd had all these symptoms even before we broke up I kind of expedited the process of our breakup because it reflected the lack of commitment and things being kind of shady anyway so basically in the dream this was like the large black snake like the custody battle um, the separation, like losing my house because it was a house we had purchased together. Like all of that was the black snake. This big, scary looking black snake was like where all of my energy was focused. And so I left in the dream, the room with all these white snakes to go chase this giant black snake down and thinking like, I need to kill the snake. Like I need to get rid of this problem. And again, that was where my mind had been. It had been all about 
this big threat and like, I was like, okay, yeah, I'm having a health issue. Like I'll deal with it later. I'll deal with it later. I'll deal with it later. And like when we had been together, I had said to myself and said to him, like, this could be leukemia. But then it went on for so long. I was like, this isn't leukemia. Like I would be dead by now. Right. Um, so I pretty much was like, you know, it could be hormonal. This started after my daughter was born. Like I'll deal with it later. Back to the dream. So I'm chasing the snake, chasing the snake, this black snake. And then out of literally nowhere, like out of left field, as I'm running down this path, kind of like through the woods, I've left the house at this point, I'm running. This little baby snake, like one of these white snakes comes up and bites me on the arm and I can feel myself dying. Like in the dream, I feel myself dying. I know that I'm dying. And then this woman appears on my path in front of me again, right? And she says to me, you were worried about the wrong things. She was like, this black snake looks really big and scary, but the real, I'm trying to remember her exact words. Cause at this point I figured out, okay, like this is an angel. This isn't like a zookeeper or whatever. Um, she was like, you were worried about the wrong snake. Like the big black one looks all scary, but you know, it's not actually venomous. I said it was a Python. It's more like an anaconda, like one of the ones that squeezes you, but it can be like, it's like, especially if there's other people around, like you can cut that snake down. Right. Um, that problem is, is less dangerous, even though it looks more dangerous, which kind of goes back to my original interpretation of the dream. Um, but she said, these little white snakes, these were the really dangerous ones that you like ignored. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of like my original interpretation was like, maybe these are, it's saying there's some like hidden issue, like something that looks innocent. I'm not giving enough attention to. So I wasn't like wrong, but I had no idea this was about leukemia. Like I didn't understand leukemia. I didn't understand disease, didn't understand the blood. Like I'm an artist. Like I have no, I wasn't like bad at science in school. I was good at environmental science, but anything like biology, anything like super math related, I was not good at. So I did not know any of this. Um, and so basically, where was I with that? Um, oh, she gave me antivenom. So one of these snakes had bitten me. And then this lady who was an angel in my dream, like she then gave me the antivenom and I felt my whole body relax. I was like, I know like right now I'm okay. Like I know I'm going to be okay. Um, at this moment in time, like she had given me this shot and I now know that represented like chemo, like all the treatment that I've had to go through. Um, and then I woke up from that dream. So, I've told this to my oncologist. I've told this to my, you know, nurse practitioners. I was able to avoid a bone marrow transplant, thank God. Um, but this was way, 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 way back in July. And the day after I had this dream, I was working at the park, and um, a, a park here. I live in Houston, Texas, and I was an assistant for the director of the park before I got ill. And we used to do like art in the park for kids, which is like crafts. And we were doing something for like hot air balloons for the 4th of July, where it was like a giant balloon. Um, and the next day, you know, we were focused on that. And there was this boy who started making all these snakes and it was in no way related to the project we were doing. Like it was the most random thing. And he walked up to me and was like, do you know about snakes? And I had had this dream the night before. That's how I was able to pinpoint like when this exactly happened. It was July of 2022. Um, right before 4th of July, because we were working on this project. I was like, no, why? And he started telling you about all the different kinds of snakes. I was like, that's weird. But even weirder is when I was diagnosed, which was January of 2023, I was in the hospital. And um, that's when that whole thing happened with a Chinese spy balloon, with that giant balloon and like all the governments like fighting like China versus the US. And that had been another kind of like, okay, this is not random because we'd been working on these balloons, like these US air balloons, like when this happened. And this boy was talking to me about the snakes, which was the night after I'd had the stream. So I know that's a bit of a stretch, but y'all who are like more spiritually, like you'll catch my drift here. Um, also, I'm sorry, I've never made a video like this long. I am trying to stay focused and not like be all, you know, all over the place, but I'm sure I'll get better at this with time. So please give me some grace. <laughs> But um, anyway, so people have told me, my oncologist, nurse practitioners have been like, there's no way you had ALL that long. Like you would have literally been dead. I was, and I've told them like, I know when this started. And so there's been this whole like, just kind of confusion amongst all the medical professionals because I have the pictures to prove it. Like I have pictures of my legs. I have pictures of me working. Like it was a mess. 
And when I was finally diagnosed is when I finally got health insurance. It's that's a whole separate story. Like finally made it to the doctor. And then my doctor called me like, you need to go for an emergency blood transfusion because my hemoglobin, which is the oxygenation in the blood was 4.3 and normal is 12. Like three is when your organs shut down. So my spleen was sticking out. I thought I had a hernia. My spleen was protruding. Like I almost died, you guys. Um, but they're saying there's no way, like it's a super aggressive blood cancer. Like you would have been dead. And I figured that out as well. Like the angel in my dream with the stick, like she was keeping them contained. So like one of my questions for God is like, why did I have to go through any of this? Like if you have the power to keep this at bay for so long, why couldn't you just prevent me from going through this? Like, I don't know the answer. But I do know that if this had to happen for some reason, um, God was showing me that through his angels, he was like keeping it at bay until I couldn't make it to the doctor. Because another element of this is that I was having symptoms literally since my daughter was born. My ex and I had like a nasty custody battle and I got custody. But if he had known, if we had all known that I had had cancer at the time, there's a good chance he might have gotten custody. And when he tried to take my daughter when I was in the hospital and I, ha and I had cancer, the reason that he was not successful was because we already had an order in place. So literally it was God. And like if I'd found out, so there's a reason I didn't know sooner. And if I'd found out any later, it would have been too late. Uh, short of like a true, like just unexplainable, medically unexplainable miracle, like I would have died. So it was literally God. And I'm from a tiny, 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 tiny town with like 5,000 people in it on the northern border of Canada on the west coast in Washington state. I came down here to Houston with my ex who's an engineer, oil and gas. And that's how I ended up in Houston. And the whole time God was telling me, like, you need to go to Houston. And this relationship was not a good relationship. And I just, but every time I'd be like, am I supposed to go? Not that God condones sin. And I shouldn't have been in this situation to begin with. But I'll get, again, I'll get more into that on another video, but God told me like, you go to Houston, go to Houston. And then when the relationship, when he didn't like stand by his word and commit to me, I was like, God, what the heck? Like all my family is back home. Like I'm here in Houston, Texas, like by myself, like, why am I here? And, um, I know it was because the largest cancer treatment center in the world. Like I had no idea about the Texas medical center. I didn't know that Houston was known for cancer treatment for leukemia treatment. And that's where I ended up. And like my parents also moved here, um, like right before I got sick. And they literally said like, we felt like God was telling us to move here. And without my parents support here, without everything, like I would have lost my daughter. So it's just, there's a lot more to this. I also had a vision the day the, either the day or the day right before I went into the emergency room, I had a vision that's also related to leukemia. Um, I've had visions and dreams and things like that for a lot of my life. Like even before I was saved, even before I really believe I was saved, like I was, I have always had these things and I think I'm just prophetically wired, which now that I'm kind of getting, I've gotten so much more into my faith. I understand a bit more of how the spiritual things work as far as giftings, but I, I have dreams a lot. I've had visions. Um, this is just a tiny, tiny bit of my Christian testimony, how I actually came to believe fully that Jesus Christ is real and he is the Messiah and the son of the living God. And he is God. And like that full realization of who Jesus was, even though for years after that, I was still sinning and living in sin because I didn't understand or believe in the Bible as being a hundred percent truth in the word of God. I just knew that Jesus Christ is real. But in my mind, I was like, well, people wrote the Bible. Like I was just ignorant. Um, that whole coming to Christ was actually also through a dream I had of Jesus Christ. And I was at the crucifixion and like, I can't even talk about that one. Like it's hard. I mean, I will, I'm going to share that, but like that was intense. Um, that was when I was like 21, as I mentioned, I'm 28, but, um, this is just a tiny, this is me trying to get started. I know this video is awkward. I don't know how to make, I, I'm going to get better at this, but anyone who's made it this far into this video, thank you for listening to my story. And I hope we can get to kind of know one another through this channel. I really admire people who have started these channels. I haven't done it for a long time because I've been worried about my ex finding it. Um, 
or like what he would think or trying to come after me for talking about him or I don't know I just have been very afraid and I'm really hoping that I'm able to overcome those fears and share what God has given me to share through these experiences that I've been lucky enough to have from him like this dream I've mentioned um so it really got me through a lot of my treatment when I was inpatient and I almost died several times but God had shown me I was able to look at it on the back end and there's a reason it was symbolic. There's a reason it wasn't like you are going to have cancer because it would have, it was not the time for me to know. Um, but he showed me so clearly where I was able to look back on it and understand like God had showed me what was going to happen and that I was going to be okay. That, you know, I was going to have this protection over me and it helped me so much. And then through the ensuing legal battle that resulted from my ex then trying to come after me for my daughter, when I was in the hospital, God gave me so many dreams and visions regarding that as well. He showed me what to do legally. He showed me what motions to file. He told me what to do. Um, like the voice of God in my dreams isn't like a voice. I never see God's face. He's either a figure where I don't see his face and he's kind of off to the side or like larger than life, but I don't see his face or it's just a voice. And it's extremely authoritative, holy a lot of authority and then Jesus Christ whenever I see Jesus he's like I can see him and he's like a man and he's right there um and ironically he usually doesn't speak as much it's more like he communicates just through his eyes it's like I just know almost like telepathically like I know what he's telling me but I can see him so it's almost like opposites in a, in a way like as far as the experience but like Jesus is God like it's I don't <laughs> I'm doing such a bad job with this video, but this is just me getting started. This is the first little bit of my story. So I'd love to know what you guys think. Um, thank you for listening to my story and I'm trying to find the off button. Okay. I'm going to post this. Bye. Thank you.